Have we started yet? Yeah, we yeah. have. Uh, this is the old Z axis with the crossover plate. This is the full length of the uh, potential movement. The stepper motor at the top. This used to sit over here and slide in. Uh, two bolts attached at the top. And on the other side, three bolts from below. The uh, side profile, one bolt's here and one bolt's here, so they don't line up perfectly. They're not in line that way, but they both, these outer ones, are the same distance from center outwards. For comparison's sake, there's the old Z-axis. Here's the replacement Z-axis. A uh, hell of a lot more travel this way. A uh, little accordion in at the bottom to stop the, uh, the build-up that you can see uh, getting in here and uh, caking up the actual lead screw. So there'll be less, less build-up, better stepper motor, ball screw, uh, better uh, rails rather than just steel bar. So much better as far as movement that way goes. The two back plates have multiple mounting holes. We found that the, the inner holes here are uh, actually the right choice. Which should give about 10 mil clearance between that and the gantry when it's loaded on. Uh, the gantry itself, the stepper motor here is going to come off. And this replacement part will be, this piece will be taken off and this piece will be put on. Which will get about 100 mil of additional height once that's done so that rotary axes can fit underneath. So in here we have two uh, bolts which are M5 which hold the skate bearing at the end of the lead screw. Uh, these are just for the stepper motor. These secure the two steel rods that the axis moves on that way. This one and this one just attached to the aluminium modesty on the other side. The modesty on the back is attached on the top and two on the back. Uh, this just attaches a bracket for the tractor to go on the other side and this is a countersunk which uh, attaches to a bracket that the gantry rides on. So you've got a similar number of those here. Because this is 12mm and this is 12.6 or half inch, I faced off a little bit here so that there's the same depth uh, around the lead screw from either side. And all of these have been tapped in preparation for this. So the next move is to uh, basically take parts of this off and try to not disturb the mechanism but put this piece here in where this one was and put the bolts back in again and uh, see how it goes. That's uh, video? Yep. Mm. It's on? That's really good. Welcome back, yes. <laughs> this is the non-stepper motor side of the, uh, the gantry which just has this nylock bolt uh, sitting on the end of the threaded rod. The thread here on the threaded rod, bearing here inside of a 22mm recess. These two hold the steel rod in place. These two tap into the modesty on the other side, and again three on the back to hold the back modesty part on. So it's a lot uh, simpler of a construction on this side. Uh, the other side, with the where the stepper motor goes, I've already done, and it worked out quite well. I took these back parts off and the modesty off first. Here I've taken this off because I was unsure of how hard that would be to get off. Um, turns out holding it with some pliers on the other end and something to loosen up the grip of the pliers to not tear into it. Uh, you can take it off reasonably easily. Uh, so I take these off first, the back one's off, these two off. Slide this off, put the bearing into the other guy and then slide that back on and do the same thing in reverse. Okay, once you get them to crack, they're uh, pretty easy to come on out. Just getting that initial, uh, initial break. Well, this would have been assembled quite a few years ago. Yeah, these bolts weren't too bad. Uh, the ones we're actually holding the Z-axis on were quite loose. So. Anyone with these machines, I sort of recommend uh, fixing that before we're using it too long. A little bit of uh, protective maintenance. Well, other than having it fly off at you, losing the Z-axis mid-cut wouldn't really do much for you.
rocking and rolling the old axes. These are a bit fiddly to get out because they're coming from some sort of non-tapped thing on the other side of the modesty. So it's really not your friend when you're trying to get these guys out. And you get the initial half turn and it really doesn't do much for hand turning. The second half turn and then you sort of think, can I go long? And the survey says just one second half turn. Why are they so hard to get out? Well they're coming out of a a pseudo thread on the other side. Like, you know, they haven't actually tapped it. There's this inner channel, basically. Ah. So it's coming out of its own self-tap ream sort of thing on the other side. For the first time since they were installed. Yeah, pretty much. And it's interesting, given that whether you're using some sort of impact driver to try and ream them in. Yeah. That's going to be cleared now. Slowly. It may be better to leave there until I get these other ones off. Yeah, that's not helpful. Godzilla are attacking the gantry. What's behind the secret panel? <laughs> I wonder, they, they claim actually that the, uh, the modesty prevents any silver from getting through to the lead screw. Any and all silver. I don't think it does that. I think there may be some that's made it through. This little maintenance that everyone does to their CNC. And what do we think will the reveal will be? Spiderwebs. Dun dun dun. Not actually that bad. There's quite a bit of mahogany dust in here. Yeah. <laughs> Where did that mahogany dust come from? These areas here, uh, this is where the bolt comes through the thing and basically screws into this half thread that they've got in the back of the modesty. So these were the ones that were difficult the whole way to get out. So, I mean, I'd imagine you could throw a uh, automated tap in and do the same sort of thing, but oh, yeah. it's not ideal. The, uh, the thinness is uh, reasonably... Yeah, it's thicker than I thought for the modesty. Players, the side that doesn't contain the stepper motor basically has a small middle separator and uses two skate bearings on either side. So if you've designed for one skate bearing on the outside, you're not going to match the original design. So these are the three lower bolts. Uh, put in with washers, they're slightly longer, but not quite this length, whatever that comes out to be, 25mm. Uh, so as long as I can make them, this plate I think is a little bit thicker than the underplate in the old one. So those three are slotted in, the closest ones to the gantry that I made. And I could possibly, if I file things down, take it about maybe 10mm. Closer I'd have to countersink some of the nuts at the top there. So this is as good as I can get the, uh, the Z plate as close as I can bring it into the gantry at the moment. Although this modesty is a bit of a gratuitous sort of waste of space. Uh, ultimately you get the feeling that these modesties will be removed and these two steel bars and the threaded rod in there will be replaced with proper linear rails at some point, which is inevitable, but... Uh, 
<laughs> Not right now. Okay. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Is it on? Yep. Is it video? Yep. Uh, so the lead screw is in here. What we discovered, uh, which caused much uh, joy, is that the uh, uh, this side has a very thin piece and a bearing on either side. So different design to the step motor side. Uh, smaller bearings as well, not skate bearings, 18mm roughly on the outside. So you've got to uh, have fun and games if you've already got a 22mm uh, cutout on this side for the bearings. If you jam a bearing up on this side of the lead screw, once you put the bolts in, uh, there's not enough room if there's a bearing here trapping this end of the lead screw. You basically bind the lead screw when you put the two sides in. So then we decided to cut the outside of a couple of washers and place them in underneath the bearing on this side so that the entire lead screw moves that way a little bit and when the two sides are put on you're no longer actually binding the lead screw uh, just because you're pulling the, the two sides in and you can no longer move it. By moving the lead screw that way a little bit we need to put some washers in here to actually move the stepper motor out a little bit as well and once you do that and get the coupler in the middle so that it doesn't move either way and Strangely enough, this piece here, you need to shave the bottom part of this modesty off because otherwise the modesty binds to this panel. I'm assuming that the other little guy panel... Uh, here's one that I prepared earlier. I'm assuming this guy's under panel doesn't come out as far as this. So on the old one's case, because the little bolts are right at the edge, so they'd be underneath, so the modesty would actually go down behind this. But obviously if you've got this coming out here, it's going to bind to the modesty, so you're going to need to take a few mil off. So that's a little trap for the arm players. But once you get it all going, uh, this moves by hand quite easily. So I finally got the machine together again. The new taller side panels on here. Uh, the Z is retracted a fair way. One of the side effects of doing this is the uh, this spindle mounting plate, uh, this actual aluminium bracket could have been a bit lower down, uh, so the motor itself is now uh, substantially lower in that bracket than it was before. Reattach the endoscopic camera there, and behind the endoscopic camera is a, a new fixed webcam. Fixed webcam is handy, it's a sort of sub $10 Aldi camera, uh, but you can do motion JPEG 720 streaming and the JPEGs are hard run coded, which takes very little CPU on the Raspberry Pi. Still up the top here is the Pi camera, which gives an overview of the whole in case. Uh, the whole assembly with the uh, power lines and water is now up higher. New saddle clamps at the back for that. The stepper motor just sort of dangles, has its cable and the end stops sort of dangling loose up to a new high pivot point up here. And that gives it enough travel to move around the whole base. Overall, I'd highly recommend this sort of upgrade. Uh, it does take a fair bit of time uh, to get the, uh, well, the whole Z-axis assembly took quite a while. Uh, cutting the size wasn't really that bad, but if you have the same machine, you need to work out if you're going to have, if you move the, the entire gantry up by 10 millimeters, uh, 100 millimeters upwards, whether or not your cutter is actually going to still be useful, um, especially considering that on the old machine, this area here in the modesty, the bearings actually sat in there and only travelled up and down. So if you consider moving that entire limited Z travel up another 100 millimetres, you may not be able to cut very much or may be very awkward. In this case, I've added the same sort of length to the Z new Z axis, so it's been moved up, but I can still move it down quite a distance now and the plus side is things like the fourth axis here can actually slide in underneath the gantry now uh, so clamps and things like that that it just didn't have the clearance before and the fourth axis can be over there which would basically give me this is nearly uh, as far this way as it goes but if the fourth axis comes out this would give me a fair amount of uh, area uh, with a, a live end over here to work on uh, fourth axis stuff.